Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and happy new year. If there's anything 2020 has taught us is that being in tech is definitely the right move or working at a job that makes working remote accessible is definitely the right move. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing five in-demand software engineering roles that nobody talks about, but I predict will be very, very key roles in 2021. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. So the first role is the data engineering role. In these past couple years, data has been a critical part of how businesses make decisions and how they decide what different strategies to take and products to produce. Since we live in a digitized society and so much data is being produced every single minute and every single second, because of this increase of data, there's increased demand of people who can analyze this data and help extract this data. The problem is that a lot of the data that exists currently is raw data that's unstructured and very difficult for data scientists and data analysts to actually use. This is where data engineers come in. They're responsible for three major things. They're responsible for ingesting data. So that means that they're responsible for collecting the data from different sources and building the pipelines to collect that data. They're also responsible for transforming that unstructured data into something that data analysts and data scientists can use. And they're definitely looking at the most optimal way to collect that data and to actually give that data to data scientists and data analysts. Finally, they're responsible for maintaining the pipelines and the interfaces. And that might mean making sure that the database where all the data is stored is up to date the servers and the code bases, and just basically all of the data infrastructure is maintained and running smoothly so that data scientists and data analysts can actually utilize that data. Data engineers are using tools like SQL, Python, R, and in 2019, data engineering role grew by 50%, and we saw that increased growth through 2020. And I'm predicting that 2021, we're gonna need even more data engineers. So that's why this is the first role on this list. Now let's move on to the second role. So the second role I have on here is the blockchain engineering role. If you've been following Bitcoin, you know it's been one of the most important financial innovations of this past century. And it's actually hit an all-time high of $26,000 at the time of me filming this video. So anyone who has Bitcoin, you're probably rich and I probably, I should have invested in Bitcoin and I regret not investing in Bitcoin. But Bitcoin isn't just a cool way to make money and a really innovative currency. The underlying infrastructure called the blockchain that allows Bitcoin to stay secure and distributed is one of the biggest reasons that Bitcoin has been successful. And a lot of businesses are curious about how they can leverage that technology and use it in other spaces outside of the financial space. And we've seen blockchain actually being applied in really cool ways. Like for example, Walmart created a food traceability system that allows them to trace the exact leafy green and the exact farm where E. coli or salmonella might come from, all using blockchain. So as you can see, businesses are very curious about how to use blockchain in different industries. And this curiosity has led to this role called the blockchain engineering role. So blockchain engineers are responsible for building blockchain solutions for different businesses. So they not only need to know how to actually build the blockchain, but they also need to understand the business's needs and how blockchain can actually help the business. So blockchain engineers need to know a bunch of things, but more specifically, they need to have a strong computer science foundation. On top of that computer science foundation, they need to know how to build blockchain. So they need to know about smart contracts, cryptography, they need to know how to make dApps, they need to know everything related to blockchain. And in 2019, we saw the blockchain engineering role grew by 9%, and we saw that increase again in 2020. And I predict that in 2021, we'll see an even higher demand for blockchain engineers, especially with blockchain hitting an all-time high in December. Now let's move on to the next role, which is the security software engineer. In 2020, we saw a lot of crazy hacks, like Twitter got hacked, and we've seen a lot of conspiracies of hacks. So 2020 was definitely the year of hacking. A lot of engineers have realized that security can't be 
an afterthought. It has to be the forefront when you're building your different applications and when you're building your different products. Security is extremely important. And this is why we've seen a general rise in security professionals. So what do security engineers actually do? Security engineers are responsible for protecting user data and company data. So they do a couple of things. So they're responsible for building out security systems for companies to make sure that there are no data breaches and there are no data leaks. They're also responsible for monitoring and searching the code base and the company's technology to see if there are any potential vulnerabilities or places where the company can be easily hacked. So they might be running things like penetration tests, security assessments, to make sure that the company's technology is secure all across the board. Another thing security engineers are responsible for doing is setting the best practices at a company and setting security standards that other engineers need to abide by. Finally, security engineers are constantly testing, constantly monitoring, and just making sure that the software is safe and that there is no potential of a leak. So what do security engineers need to know? They need to know a lot of things, but one of the most important things they need to know is they need to know about, they need to know a lot about networking. They need to know about operating systems. They need to know programming because they may have automated scripts to help them build and monitor these security systems. They also need to be really interested in security. So they need to be constantly up to date with the new trends in security and just keep track, keeping track of hacks and any changes that are happening in the security space. So the next role is the AR VR software engineer. This is the role I'm actually very curious about because I feel like AR and VR is still a very new space. Even though we're seeing a lot of AR and VR technologies popping up, it's still a very new space and there's a lot of room for innovation. So if you're not sure what AR and VR is, you can see AR, which is augmented reality, as just the altering of the real world. So any addition of a 3D graphic or images. Virtual reality is when the computer creates a virtual space. So basically it's a computer generated reality. So you'll not only see AR and VR in video games and in social media, but a lot of businesses have been curious about how they can apply AR and VR to different spaces. For example, because we've all been quarantined for like nine months, <laughs> Now, a lot of companies are curious about how they can actually create software that allows people to travel without leaving their homes. Another way I've, I've personally been seeing AR and VR being used is in creating virtual meeting spaces. So instead of going into the office, companies are creating these workspaces where different employees can hang out virtually without actually having to see each other in person. Honestly, I think that there is so much that's gonna happen in the AR and VR space. And it, it could be a good idea if you're interested in it to hop into it now. But before we talk about what AR and VR engineers are using on a daily basis, let's talk a little bit about what they're responsible for. So AR and VR engineers are responsible for developing AR and VR prototypes. They're responsible for debugging them, testing them out. Um, and analyzing them. So they're basically just involved in any sort of AR and VR prototyping and creation. AR and VR engineers have to know a bunch of things. They definitely have to know C++, C Sharp. These are the languages that they are using to actually program out these virtual spaces. They also need to know software like Unity and Unreal. And you might also find them doing some 3D modeling, some linear algebra to make sure that things are operating as expected. So that's what you have for AR and VR engineer. So now let's move on to the next role, which is the SRE role. SRE role, I don't know about you, but I've been seeing so many SRE positions open on like Glassdoor and on LinkedIn. I feel like it's this hot new role. And it's a role you'll usually see at larger companies that have um, more data centers and more complex problems and issues with scalability. Site reliability engineer is a role that was created in was created by Google in 2003. And SREs are responsible for making sure that a large scale website is running and it's available at all times for people all over the world. The SRE role was developed to actually automate out large operation teams a lot and large system administration teams and think about how software engineering principles and programming can be used to actually automate these different roles. 
So you'll see SREs involved in so many different things. Some of them are involved in and how code is rolled out to different users. You'll see SREs responsible for actually monitoring um, the site and seeing how the performance of the site is. You'll see SREs responsible for for scaling the site and scalability. Finally, you might even see SREs on call. So a lot of them might have to be on call when a site is down. They might be the first line of contact to figure out how to fix the site. There you have it. Those are the five software engineering roles that you want to look out for in 2021. So let me know down below, was there anything you were interested in learning more about? Any role that really stood out for you? And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.